Between 1990 and 2000, the National Fire Protection Association reports that more than 22,000 fires occurred in dormitory facilities in the U.S. These fires resulted in property damage losses in excess of $212 million, more than 900 personal injuries, and 26 fatalities. That is why universities and colleges around the world are raising the issue of fire protection and prevention to a new level of interest. To show the power of fire in a dorm room setting and just how important sprinklers can be, FM Global staged a unique live fire demonstration at its world-class research campus. Engineers had constructed two typical dorm rooms. Both would be set on fire. One room had a sprinkler, the other did not. Each room was outfitted with a wide assortment of bedding, clothing, books, paper, posters, and trash that would typically be expected to collect in any dorm room. Pretty low, yeah, it looked really realistic. A little bit too clean, in fact, but it was kind of fun to see how everything spread out. It looks pretty typical, you know, computers and the, 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 the size of it. And it looks pretty, uh, pretty genuine, pretty authentic, that's for sure. Let's take a look at the two fire tests in a side-by-side -side comparison in real time. The fire was started in a trash can. As you watch, consider the room temperatures as the fires develop, the response time of your fire brigade or department, and the average time it takes to evacuate your buildings. Flames are evident in the protected room one minute, 20 seconds after ignition. Also at this time, the smoke detector in the unprotected room alarms. The curtains in the protected room have ignited, and the air temperature near the ceiling at the center of the room is about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. At 1 minute 34 seconds, the sprinkler actuates at 243 degrees. Flames are driven down from the ceiling, and the temperature is reduced to below 75 degrees within seconds. If the fire went unnoticed, it is at this point that the automated alarm at the central station would be received, and the fire brigade begins to respond. At 3 minutes 50 seconds, flames cover the back portion of the ceiling and the temperature at the ceiling of the unprotected room is now in excess of 1,500 degrees. At 4 minutes 20 seconds, the fire moves across the ceiling of the unprotected room and comes out the door. At 4 minutes 40 seconds, the unprotected room flashes over. Air temperatures at the center of the room at all levels are now in excess of 1,600 degrees. As a reference point, metal beams begin to lose their strength at 1,500 degrees. At 4 minutes 50 seconds, air temperatures at all levels at the center of the unprotected room are approaching 1,800 degrees. In contrast, eye level temperature at the center of the protected room is approximately 100 degrees, and the air temperature three feet above the floor is less than 60 degrees. At 5 minutes 19 seconds and 5 minutes 28 seconds, the windows of the unprotected room burst. Five minutes 35 seconds after ignition, the fire in the unprotected room continues to burn vigorously, and the test in the unprotected room is terminated. Carbon monoxide and oxygen levels were reasonable up until just before flashover. However, a couple of breaths of the superheated air will result in asphyxiation. Five minutes 45 seconds after ignition, the fire in the protected room remains under control. There is adequate visibility in the protected room, and the temperatures remain at 114 degrees at eye level and 68 degrees at floor level. Let's take a look at dorm room number one. This is dorm room number one. The room is destroyed. Yes, it is. It was a very intense fire. Dennis Waters works for FM Global. We saw flames shooting out this door. That you did. And while that was happening, we had temperatures inside on the ceiling of 1,850 degrees. It was a very intense fire. So a person living in this dorm room would have had only minutes to escape. Just minutes, and chances are that heat and fire would have followed him right down the corridors he was leaving the building. 
Here is how risk managers who witnessed the test reacted to the fire in the unsprinkler dormitory room. Uh, how fast that goes in the heat uh, and the flames just like it, just the, how fast it goes just a shocking uh, it, we've got a situation where we're on top of a mountain so the fire department uh, response is about 13 minutes it's quite a long time and just thinking like we haven't got a hope without sprinklers well it's stunning how quickly it gets going and and gets out of control uh, and how fast or how little time people have to to react now let's look at the dorm room with the sprinkler. Watch the difference. At 1 minute and 34 seconds the sprinkler activated. Most of the flames are extinguished and the fire is contained to the corner. So with sprinklers would the fire have spread to other rooms or out into the hallway? Actually I think the fire would have been confined to this space and this space only. And the fire department would have gotten here on time? Absolutely. They'd have been here with plenty of time to spare. Let's take another look at the dorm room without the sprinkler. Quite different from the one that did. So if you're a parent with a student in college, this is the type of room you'd want them to have. It sure is. Now let's hear what risk managers had to say about the test in the room with the sprinkler. Very graphic sprinkler illustration of uh, the benefits of sprinklers. Of five or ten uh, seconds, it basically knocked it down to nothing. Um, now it's just a matter of going in sprinkling and, all and all achieving the final extinguishment. And, um, I think it's well worth Pretty the Pretty dramatic contract. Well, boy, it works. Uh, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that uh, when you compare the difference between that's over no ignition, sprinkler Kristen? versus Holding about this 400 degrees small over residual ignition. fire, uh, no comparison. So. It's amazing that just uh, a matter of a few seconds that room, how the fires got started and how they spread. And, and, a and then, of course, the dramatic difference that the sprinkler made in keeping the fire rooms. from just getting we way out of control and spreading dramatically throughout the building. Would, just affirmation that, that sprinklers do have an um, effect on containing fires, not necessarily eliminating them, but certainly containing them until the fire department is able to arrive and totally extinguish our guys Again, because of the cost of retrofitting most uh, residence halls with sprinklers, it still is well worth the investment when you think of what the potential and, uh, is uh, a very fast responding the, the damage department. and loss of life. And clearly, it's a benefit. Let's take another look at the two tests. The unsprinklered dorm room, fully engulfed in flame, and the sprinklered dorm room, a visible but easily contained fire. A stunning comparison and a convincing argument for installing sprinklers on your campus.